Hi, I'm Yael, and today I will talk about spiking neural networks through the lens of streaming algorithms. This is a joint work with Cameron Moscow and Merav Parter. In the high level, a neural network is a network of connected neurons, where we have a set of input neurons, where the input is presented dynamically over time, and we can think about the inputs as binary patterns or zero-one vectors. We have a set of output neurons and additional auxiliary neurons that process the input that we see. For example, computing the mean or the median of the inputs or counting the number of different inputs that we see. While we also have space limitations. And when I'm saying space, I'm referring to the number of non-input neurons that the network uses. So in neural algorithms, we have a stream of inputs that we like to process, while we also have memory limitations. Now in computer science, these challenges are captured in the streaming setting, where in the classical streaming model, we have a stream of inputs that we like to process, and for each input that we see, we can process it using some algorithm and store limited number of bits. Now, while streaming algorithms have been studied over the years in computer science, we don't know a lot about data processing with neural algorithms. So in this work, we studied the connection between these two models, where we hope to get some understanding of memory constraints in neural networks from the work that has been done in the streaming setting. So the first question that we asked is can we get space upper bounds for neural algorithms from known space upper bounds for streaming algorithms? So we ask, can we convert space efficient streaming algorithms into space efficient neural algorithms? Then in the other direction we ask, can we convert space efficient neural algorithms into space efficient streaming algorithms? And if we'll have a reduction in this direction, it will also allow us to convert space lower bound for streaming algorithms into space lower bounds for neural algorithms. And in order to understand the challenges when we compare these two models, I will start with defining the neural setting. So in this work, we considered a biologically inspired model called spiking neural networks that was first introduced by MASS and has been recently studied in computer science. And in this model, we can think about the network as a directed weighted graph where the nodes are the neurons and the weighted edges indicates the synaptic connection between them. Now each neuron is a threshold gate where the neuron has a threshold value and it fires, meaning it outputs one if the incoming weighted sum from its neighbors exceeds the neuron's threshold. Now this is a deterministic neuron, and we also have probabilistic neurons that fire with some probability that depends on the difference between the incoming weighted sum and the neuron's threshold. Regarding the network dynamics, so the network evolves in discrete synchronous rounds, just like a Markov chain, where in each round, each one of the neurons compute the incoming weighted sum of its neighbors that fired in the previous round and fires accordingly. So the firing state of the neurons in each round depends on the firing state of the neurons in the previous round. And in addition, we have a biological constraint that each neuron is either excitatory, this means that all the outgoing edges have positive weights, or inhibitory where the all outgoing edges have negative weights. Now, neural computation and biological neural networks are usually considered to be stochastic, and recent work also investigates the role of randomness in these networks, which in some cases is shown to be crucial. And in this setting, we have two sources of randomness. First, we have the probabilistic neurons, and second, we can also choose their edge weights in a random manner. Okay, so when we compare these two models, it is not so clear which one is stronger. 
On the one hand, we have an advantage for streaming algorithms because we don't need to pay for the algorithm's description. We don't need to store it in memory. While in Neuhall algorithms, the algorithm is actually encoded in the network itself, in the hardware of the network. Then in the other direction, in neural algorithms, we have a free source of randomness that we can encode in the edge ways. Now recall that the space complexity of a neural algorithm is the number of non-input neurons that we use. And if we like to store this many random bits in the streaming setting, this might be expensive. So what did we show? In the first direction of converting streaming algorithms into neural algorithms, we focused on two fundamental streaming problems. The first one is median computation, where the goal is to output the median of the presented inputs. Now, this problem is quite challenging in the neural setting where we only have threshold gates because of its nonlinearity. And computing the exact solution, both in the streaming setting and as we'll see later on also in the neural setting, requires linear space. So we focused on the approximation variant of the problem where we will like to output a one plus epsilon approximation with probability one minus delta. For this problem, we showed a neural algorithm that mimics the best known streaming algorithm and uses space that nearly matches the streaming upper bound up to polylogarithmic factors, where the polylog is in delta and n where n is the input size. The second problem that we considered is the distinct elements problem, where the goal is to output the, the number of different inputs that we see. And this problem as well requires linear space to solve exactly, both in the streaming setting and in the neural setting. So we focused on the approximation variant and we gave a neural algorithm with space complexity that is nearly optimal, up to polylogarithmic factors in n and in delta. In addition to, to, the, to these two results, we also gave a general neural algorithm for linear sketches, where actually many of the known streaming algorithms are in fact linear sketch algorithms. And we gave a neural implementation for the count mean sketch data structure, which allows us to approximate the frequency of the inputs that we see in the stream. Now turning to the other direction, first we gave a neural lower bound for the distinct elements problem that matches the streaming lower bound, where this is obtained using reduction to communication complexity protocols that mimics the reductions from the streaming setting. And more generally, we gave a general reduction that takes any neural algorithm with space S, where we assume S is polynomial in the input size, and translates it into a streaming algorithm that given a stream of size M, uses space S plus a logarithmic additive factor in N times N, and this reduction succeeds with high probability. So I will now focus on this direction of converting neural algorithms into streaming algorithms. As a warm-up, let's first consider deterministic algorithms. So in deterministic neural algorithms, the network description is deterministic. All the edge weights are deterministic. And in addition, the firing states of the neurons can be determined deterministically from the previous firing state of the neurons plus the network description. So what we can do given a deterministic network which uses S non-input neurons, we can then translate it into a streaming algorithm that actually simulates the behavior of the network where we can store the firing states of the non-input neurons in each round. This will uh, cost us as many bits. And we simulate the network using the network's description. So we can see that we convert any deterministic neural network into a streaming algorithm in a tight manner. 
without any loss. But when we turn to the probabilistic setting, recall that the edge weights can be uh, determined randomly, can be drawn in a random manner. Now, if we like to store this many random bits in the streaming setting, this might be expensive. This might require a squared or n times s many bits. So in order to produce this many random bits, but with limited space, what we do is we use sad random generators. And specifically, we use the fact that there exists a sad random generator that takes a small seed of size log n and creates polynomial many sad random bits that looks almost truly random for any polynomial time algorithm. So given a neural network with S non-input neurons, we can then simulate it as a streaming algorithm where we store logarithmic many random bits. This will serve as the seed. Plus we also store the firing states of the non-input neurons in each round using as many bits. Then we can uh, simulate the network's behavior by extracting the edge weights using the sad random generator. And then we can determine the firing states of the neurons in each round using the previous firing states that we stored plus the network description. I would just like to note that while this reduction is nearly optimal in terms of space complexity, the update time of the streaming algorithm can be very, very large because we don't know how to find such a sad or random generator in an efficient manner. Now, improving the update time of the streaming algorithm remains open, and it can also be interesting to study the trade-off between the scale, space complexity and the time complexity. Now, let's turn to the neural lower bound for the distinct elements problem. So, just like many streaming uh, problems, the streaming lower bound for the distinct elements problem is uh, obtained using reductions to communication complexity protocols with two parties and public points. And in the high level, uh, how do these reductions work? Given a streaming algorithm that solves the distinct elements problem with space S, we convert it into a communication complexity protocol. Well, first, Alice obtain the algorithm on some set of inputs. Then she sends the state of the algorithm to Bob, meaning she sends as many bits. And then Bob can continue the execution of the algorithm on his set of inputs. Now using a similar approach, we can also obtain lower bounds for neural algorithms. For example, giving a neural network for the distinct elements problem using S non-input neurons. We can then convert it into a communication complexity protocol where both Alice and Bob can use the public coins in order to determine the random edge weights. So both Alice and Bob can have the same network description. Then Alice will simulate the network behavior on her set of inputs. She will then send Bob the firing states of the non-input neurons, meaning she will send as many bits. And this will allow Bob to continue the execution of the network on his set of inputs. And this kind of approach also extends to other streaming lower bounds that are obtained using reductions to communication complexity protocols, which uses public coins. So to sum things up, in this work, we studied the connection between streaming algorithms and neural algorithms. First, we showed how to obtain neural algorithms from known streaming algorithms for some fundamental streaming problems. And then in the other direction, we showed how to obtain neural lower bounds from streaming lower bounds that are obtained using reductions to communication complexity. And more generally, we gave a general reduction that takes any neural algorithm and translate it into a streaming algorithm. 
Thank you for listening.